Hey everyone, so I know it's been a while since I made a video, but I wanted to get on here and teach you guys a little bit more about the uh, Candidate Information Bulletin, which is also known as the CIB. So a lot of uh, questions that I keep getting is, uh, am I allowed to do this? My teacher tells me to do this, blah, 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 blah. So what I wanted to tell you guys is that basically the blanket for all the teaching is this Candidate Information Bulletin. You can find this exact copy on the website. Let me see, where's the website? I wanna make sure I get it right. Uh, you can get it at www.nictesting.org. You can also get it, um, because this is for State of California um, that I'm teaching about, uh, you can get it on the um, State Board website. If you just type in their search bar, just type in the, uh, the National Nail Technology Practical Examination CIB. Uh, so then you'll get this exact thing. So everything that you need to know about the state board exam is in here, aside from the um, precise steps. So they're not gonna give you the steps on how to do any of the procedures at all. Um, so they're gonna give you an outline of what needs to be done and the things that they're going to be looking for when you do uh, go to state board. And so when you first get to state board, you're gonna be put into a room with all of the candidates that are gonna be testing that day. Half of the students are gonna be doing their practical first and then their written after, and the other half is gonna be doing it the opposite. So uh, before you get your schedule, they're gonna take you into this room and they're going to read off this CIB here. In my class, what I do before I start state board, while they're, st they're still setting up their, um, their kits, because nine times out of 10, the students have cotton missing, um, they um, have their towels just thrown in the bag, their stuff isn't organized in the bags because they just pull it from the last time they used it. Um, and a lot of times they don't actually reorganize their bags. So in that case, I always just assume that nobody has organized their kits. That way it gives me time to read this. And at the same time, it gives them time to reorganize their bags. So they get to listen to this and get things done at the exact same time. So I'm gonna go ahead and read through and then I'll elaborate a little bit. The National Nail Technology Practical Examination is the licensure examination for nail technology, which is developed by the National Interstate Council of State Board of Cosmetology, NIC. Be certain to download and or print and review all documents that make up the NIC examination CIB. So it's important, you as a student, sometimes the, your school's just not going to um, go through these things with you. Um, but it, it's not, honestly, it's not their um, responsibility to get that to you. It's their responsibility to, to tell you where you can find things. And um, nine times out of 10, they've given you the, um, the state board website to always refer back to. Um, and so that's what they're, they're bound to do. Other than that, if you have extra questions or questions that would be answered in one of these, a lot of times, I'm not going to say all the time, but a lot of times, um, schools won't go over that with you. So it's your responsibility as a student to print this out and review it for yourself. Uh, the school's responsibility is to meet the requirements, which is uh, however many for your region, um, uh, acrylics you need to do, manicures, pedicures, um, nail enhancements, all that kind of stuff, and then the theory as well, uh, that you're getting the exact amount of hours for your region, um, and then also to teach you how to pass state board according to that school's um, predetermined method. So uh, when I was working for Marinello, we always called it the Marinello method. So we were very clear with our students that there, for each school, there's gonna be a different method. As long as they're following the, um, the general outline um, of what state board is requiring, which is in here, then it can be, it's going to be different. So when you go to state board, they always told me this um, when I was a student and I carried this over into when I started teaching. If you look over at another student while you're taking your state board exam, you're nine times out of 10 gonna fail. 
Number one, because if you get caught looking at somebody else's stuff, I mean, that's, um, that's grounds for just, you're, you failed automatically. Um, secondly, is if you look at somebody else and they're doing a procedure slightly different from you, you're gonna second guess what you were taught. So that's gonna deter you from what's happening um, on that procedure. So just stick with what your, your school's method is and you can ask questions um, if you have to do this or if you don't have to do this and you can ask me those questions if you'd like and I'm going to answer very honestly that whether it's something that's required like it's a required step or if it's uh, something that your school implements however I advise that you follow your school's method the reason why is because if you're doing something slightly different everybody else when you guys are practicing state board at your school and everybody else is doing something slightly different from you and you're like well it says that you can do this blah 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 it's gonna slip you up um, and it's oh let me not say it's going to it's likely to slip you up um, in your memorization of how to do the steps and in the order that they need to be done because you're thinking more of like the technical as aspect once you know the rules then you can break the rules um, in terms of once you know what your school's method is, then you can pick and choose what you want to pull from their method. I highly advise that you follow your instructor's method because it helps your instructor um, be able to see everybody at the exact same time. And if something is done out of order or if it's done wrong, it's easy to see. You have the teacher and then all the students and they have to be able to point out anything that uh, all of the students have done wrong and sometimes some schools have one teacher has like 20 students sometimes it's one teacher has a hundred students sometimes it's one teacher has 10 students it's just different regions have different requirements on the teacher to student ratio so it's just easier if everyone's doing the exact same thing that way if everyone's reaching for their cotton, everyone's reaching at the same time. Everyone's wiping at the same time. Everyone's ex examining at the same time. Everyone's doing all of the steps at the exact same time so that if someone's not doing that, they're, um, it's easy to see. So that's, uh, that's a very good reason why, uh, why all the teachers do the exact same thing with their students in one method. So there are many methods, just to wrap that up, there's many, 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 many methods, but there is um, the same box of rules that all of those methods have to abide by, and that is in your CIB. Please review all the information carefully. Important instructions. Do not leave the examination area without permission. Permission must be obtained to leave the examination area for any reason, including restroom usage or at the completion of the examination. A picture ID is required for re-entry into the examination. Candidates are required to bring a supply kit for their own use. Is this fan too loud? Let me turn off my fan, hold on. Okay, sorry. It is the candidate's responsibility to make certain they have a sufficient quantity of supplies that have been properly cleaned and disinfected and the implements are in proper working order. The kit will be used during the examination as dry storage and is considered part of your work area. The kit must be kept closed except when removing materials for a particular service. Candidates may remove items, supplies, etc. from the kit at any time. However, nothing may be returned to the kit. All examinations are administered in a testing environment. Candidates are evaluated at all times. Continue working until you have completed the entire section or time has elapsed. EPA registered disinfectant wipes that demonstrate bactericidal, fungicidal, and virucidal properties must be used. Disinfectant sprays are no longer allowed in the testing environment. I wanna go over a few things that I just uh, mentioned. So in the video that I made um, about the setup, I took out the hand sanitizer, sanitized my hands and put the hand sanitizer back in the bag. In the previous CIB, I believe it was 2017 that it was updated. 
Um, that one did not require that you um, don't return anything to the kit. So this was revised and effective um, for this year. It does state that you cannot put anything back into your bag. So uh, in that video, I do put the hand sanitizer back in the bag, get all the disinfectant stuff out, wipe the surfaces, and then pull it back out, spray my hands after removing the gloves, and then I place it on my, my station. So that is a mistake of mine. Um, with the new CIB, Canada Information Bulletin, you cannot put anything back into your bag, including the hand sanitizer. So when you sanitize your hands, you're going to put the hand sanitizer on your table. You're gonna sanitize your hands. You're gonna get out your, um, your gloves Put those on, place the glove bag on your station, and then you're also going to get your uh, your wipes, and you're going to wipe everything. So when you wipe your table, you're also going to pick up your, your hand sanitizer, wipe that container, place it back down. You're going to pick up your glove bag, wipe that container, put it back down, and then you can move on. So I do apologize for that. That is something I need to revise. I need to revise that entire video. Uh, also the wipes. You can no longer, as of this month, so today is June 3rd. So we're not in the month yet. Next month, July. And this, is, this means if, you, if your uh, state board date is scheduled for after July, not if you graduated after July, if your date is scheduled for July 1st, 2021 or later, then you have to abide by these rules. If it is June 30th, you do not have to abide by these rules. Go back and uh, look at the CIB. Um, I believe it was revised 2017, 2018, 2019, somewhere around there, okay? So if, if this isn't for you, if your date is before July 1st, 2021. Now for those who have the date after that, so you can no longer use your EPA registered disinfectant spray at state board, point blank period. It doesn't matter if you're using it properly, it's got all the labels on it, uh, your teacher told you that you can. If you show up, I promise you this, if you show up and you have your disinfectant spray, you will have an automatic fail. Uh, the EPA registered spray you cannot use in 2021 as of July. Um, you will be using the disinfectant wipes. Here are the uh, requirements for those wipes. Bactericidal, fungicidal, viricidal. Those three things need to be in the label. Uh, so make sure that you have that. Um, in the kit, they come with them. Um, and they come with all of the requirements and all that kind of stuff, so you don't have to worry about that when you get it from Jazzy. Very, very good. Uh, I love her, the wipes that she chose. Due to standardization of the NIC national examinations, proctors and examiners are required to adhere to the following standards. The verbal instructions will be read twice for each section of the examination. I'm going to stop there. So they do read them twice. The first time that they go through, once they say you may begin, you may begin. They're going to read it again. You don't have to sit there and wait for them to go through it. So they're gonna read, you'll perform a manicure and polish application. You'll be expected to follow all client protection, safety, and fashion control procedures. You have 20 minutes to complete the section. You will be informed you have 10 minutes remaining. Turn the hand towards the examiner to indicate that you've finished. Instructions will be repeated. You may begin. When they say you may begin, you may begin. They're gonna go back to the top and they're gonna say, you will perform the manicure and polish application. You'll be expected to follow all client protection, safety, and infection control procedures. You'll have 20 minutes to complete the section. You'll be informed you have 10 minutes remaining. Should the hand towards the examiner to indicate that you finished the instructions will not be repeated this time. So they won't say that part. They're not going to say the instructions will be repeated. So if you look on in your CIB, so right here, it has a little one next to it. That means they say it only one time. 
right here it has a two next to it they say this part two times so they're not going to say this this portion right here on the uh second time that they're reading through this whole thing that the proctors are saying okay with the exception of verbal instructions the proctors are not allowed to communicate with the candidates please do not ask them questions <laughs> Proctors are proctors, and they don't talk to you outside of do this. These are all the verbal instructions. You may begin, and please stop working. That's what they're going to be saying to you. Outside of that, uh, it's actually in the next portion here. It tells you what they will say if you ask a question. You're not going to get kicked out if you ask one question. But if you keep asking questions, they'll, they'll just fail you. Um, and then you'll get kicked out. <laughs> um, the examiners are not allowed to speak with the candidates. Candidates requesting information during the examination will be told one of the following statements. Do the best you can with what you have available and do as you were taught. So right there, it tells you do as you were taught. So that goes to show that they, there's no one way to do any of this. Do it the way you were taught, and if it's outside of the bounds of safety, infection control, and um, health and safety and infection control, then they'll, they'll take the point away. But if it's not outside of that, and it doesn't um, go against any of the rules that they have in your CIB, then you are fine. If a candidate experiences an emergency, please notify the proctor by raising your hand. So... An emergency. You will not have your phone in there. So emergencies are limited to you're having an asthma attack, like currently, a panic attack. You're currently experiencing something. So it's a physical emergency within that moment. Um, it's not you won't have a watch on, you won't have a phone, you won't have any of that. So it's not, oh my son, he needs me right now. You wouldn't know your phone's not in there. So just be aware that the, like you cannot have your phone in there. So that can't be an emergency or emergency. It's uh, three o'clock. My, my son usually has his bottle at this time. I have to go give him his bottle. That's you should have arranged that prior to that. Somebody else gives him his bottle because you were going to be taking a test. So that's not an emergency. Um, make sure that you're prepared because if you have to leave the testing environment, you don't just get to hop back in the testing environment. You have to go back and reschedule your entire test. Uh, you might be able to, uh, if you left during the practical, you might be able to come back during the, uh, the written, um, and take your written and then have to reschedule for your practical, something like that. Just be mindful that especially during that this COVID whole situation. It's taken people, my students, they, uh, they graduated, let's see. I had one student, she graduated, she graduated in August. She's just now getting her state board date. Some of the students got it within three months. Some of the students didn't get it until now. And mind you, that's August, September, October, November, December, January, February, March, April, May, June, nine months later. So be mindful that an emergency is not, you know, I'm freaking out because I don't know if I'm going to pass. You should be prepared because number one, you waited for this date. Number two, you've already gone through school and that took 400 hours. So if you're not prepared, you should be prepared. Candidates will be given time to set up the universal supplies, also known as general supplies, that they will use throughout the examination. Each section of the examination has a maximum time allowance, with an exception of those specified as untimed sections. Once candidates have completed all tasks in the section, please step back or turn the hand towards the examiner to indicate that you have finished. So every time you're done with something, they're going to assume that you didn't finish in time if you did not turn the hand towards the examiner because that is a rule in the CIB. So just be mindful of that. Turn the hand, if you're done, don't turn it until you know for a fact you're done. That includes um, any throwing away of whatever. So 
turn the hand once you, you're done with everything, check your station, make sure you're done with everything, and then you're done, turn the hand towards the examiner, sanitize your hands, and sit back and wait for further instructions. So that's that's gonna be the order. Make sure that you do that every time you finish, some, uh, finish um, the entire procedure. In the event that all candidates, meaning every single student in that room taking the test at the exact same time as you, if everybody finishes the section before the time has elapsed, meaning let's say that the whole thing was 20 minutes, everything uh, was done by every student in 15 minutes, whether or not they did it right, but if the hand is turned towards the examiner, that indicates they have finished. So if everybody does that in 15 minutes instead of 20, they're gonna go ahead and move on to the next section. They're not going to wait the full 20 minutes and then um, and then say, please stop working if everybody's stopped working for five minutes already. They're just gonna go ahead and move on to the next section. When the timer goes off, all candidates must stop working and step back or turn the hand towards the examiner, in the case of a nail service, immediately. So once you're done, um, I mean, uh, once they've called time, so they said, please stop working, because th that's the exact words that they'll say is, please stop working. Um, in, in that case, you're going to stop what you did, what you're doing, and just stop. This isn't, oh, let me go ahead and fix this real fast and sanitize my hands and then step back. They said stop working, stop working, okay? During all phases of the examination, candidates must follow all appropriate public protection and infection control procedures and maintain a safe work area. In the event of a blood exposure incident, candidates will be expected to follow the NIC blood exposure procedure. Failure to do so may result in the dismissal from your examination. Be sure to contact your examination provider to obtain the most current version of any addendums to the NIC blood exposure procedure or go to nictesting.org for a current downloadable copy, okay? So you can download this and you can have a copy on hand. So this, that's the website, do it. Everybody should have one. If you don't have one, if your school didn't give you one, there's no excuse. Go on the website, print one out yourself, or download it onto your phone. If the candidate does not follow infection control procedures or allow the work area to become and remain unsafe, the result may be a failing score for the examination. So if you have, um, if you're unsafe, if you have, let's say, um, the scissors just open, and just kicking it on your station in the wrong area too, that's uh, it's considered unsafe and you will fail. So just be very mindful that everything that you're doing is safe. Not just avoidable, because a lot of people do get that uh, confused. So they think, okay, well it's not it's not unsafe. I didn't I didn't injure myself. It doesn't matter. If if there's potential for an injury of any kind, it's considered unsafe. So just keep that in the back of your head. So this is uh, something that I like to do and I've always taught my students is that whenever you're taking the test, if you're stuck at a procedure or you're not sure if you can do something, first thing, is it healthy? Can, uh, can this affect someone's health if it was done improperly? Number two, is it unsafe? Can somebody get hurt, whether it's ingestible or if it's um, uh, toxic or if it's uh, in an area where it can get on your skin or um, something like that? If that is one of those things that you're, you're, you're like, ah, it might be, don't do it. So that's if it's unhealthy and unsafe, those are your two things that you can go off of that will help you uh, through the entire the entire thing. Um, it's okay if you do things out of order sometimes, uh, depending on what it is, as long as it's healthy and safe. Uh, it doesn't need to be in this particular order as long as it's healthy and it's safe. So what I mean by that, um, you wouldn't put the acrylic on without putting your prep and your prime because it's unsafe. If somebody were to uh, just have, you know, from a bare 
nail, put the acrylic right on there, it has the potential to break and that can cause injury, which is unsafe. So just, just think of it that way. So you know, I can't put that on there because it's going to be an unsafe situation for the client. So what do I need to do? I need to prep and prime. Okay, so just think of it like that. A lot of a lot of the things that you guys um, are going to run into, your answer is going to be, is it healthy and is it safe? And if it is, then you, you can most likely do it um, at the time in which you choose to implement it into your steps. The following provides examples of materials and actions that are prohibited during the examination administration. So these things you cannot do. Possession of cellular phones, watches of any kind, pagers, tablets, computers, projectors, cameras, or any other electronic or recording device, printed materials, or handwritten notes. You cannot have any writing on your clothes. You cannot have any writing on your hands, uh, unless it's like a permanent tattoo. Um, and if so, it does need to be covered if it is like an answer to something. Like I did have a barber student one time he had on his arm um, a picture. It was it was an actual tattoo. Like he had gotten this tattooed on his arm. It was a picture of the of a razor, a straight razor, and uh, it had all of the labeled parts on it. So in that case, just because it's a tattoo does not make it excusable. It needed to be covered. So he had to have a long sleeve shirt, and if it was exposed at any point in the um, in the testing environment, he would fail the test. So uh, in those occasions, that is the rules. Purses, bags, coats, hats, and any other personal items not directly needed to complete the examination are not allowed. So if you don't need your sweater, I highly advise you don't wear it. Number one, if you're touching, pulling, every time you touch something, your hair, your outfit, you're not sure of something. And so nervously, you touch your sleeves. Nervously, you flip your hair. Nervously, you do something. If you don't need it, do not wear it. Because every time you touch yourself, your clothes, your hair, anything that is not on the table, anytime you touch something that is on your person, you have to sanitize your hands. So if you forget, every single time you forget, you're gonna lose those points. So just be mindful of that. Um, also, you're not gonna wanna bring any uh, bags or anything like that in there with you. You'll have your keys. Um, they do have lockers at the facility, so you can rent a locker. I believe you rent them. I'm not sure if you rent them or if they just let people use them now. But um, you can get a locker and put your stuff in there, your purse and your, um, your keys or something like that. <clears throat> However, I just advise that I advise that you don't go alone, number one, number one, because number one, if you if you don't go alone, you can avoid having to pay for that parking because they can take the car somewhere else, go do their thing, come back and pick you up when it's done. Um, and then they can have your purse and, and you don't have to worry about keys and all that kind of stuff. They have all that. Um, uh, other than that, you might need your phone with you just so you can call. Uh, to for someone to pick you up in that case I would put that in the locker I wouldn't put anything valuable in that locker so I wouldn't bring a whole purse and then have to put your whole purse in that locker so um, just keep that in mind because you can't have you can't have your phone in there so if your phone vibrates um, makes any sort of noise uh, to indicate that you even have an electronic device whether or not you looked at it or not you will be dismissed from the examination. So just be mindful of that kind of stuff. A lot of people are like, well, it, I didn't answer it or I wasn't going to da, 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 da. If they have any indication that you have an electronic device, if they hear a vibration, if they hear the phone ring, um, if you say you need to step out for, and you go on the phone, um, you're gonna be dismissed. So if you're in a testing environment, you cannot have that kind of stuff. Uh, so just be mindful of that. Exhibiting disruptive behavior. So if you're, um, let's say you knew something that the person next to you did wrong. You can't be like, that's disruptive. You're disrupting not only the person 
that's taking the test because now they're like, oh crap, I did everything wrong. I'm freaking out. And I, I, I'm like, what, what was it? What was it? You know? So now you guys are going back and forth. It's disruptive. You'll both be dismissed from, from the exam. So you're not helping your friend. You're not helping whoever that person was. You're actually hindering them. So just be very mindful that focus on your own test, your own everything. Don't try to help other people. Don't give them looks, you know, like, mm, I don't think you should have did that. Don't. Just leave it alone. Leave it alone. It's disruptive. Um, also, if you're, you know, shouting things out, obviously, why would you do that? You're taking a test. Um, if you're, I don't know. I mean, like, don't be disruptive. <laughs> like, don't, don't do things that will cause people to look at you outside of the actual test itself. Communicating to other candidates or an, uh, or an examiner, like I just said, don't talk to the examiner. Don't be like, don't be like, mm, was I allowed to do that? Or, um, I think this is right. No, that's disruptive. And that's communicating. You just need to do your test. So whatever the step is, practice. Practice, 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 practice. I think I'm going to upload timers. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to upload timers um, for each of the procedures. And I'm going to have me saying all of the proctor stuff. I'm going to have the timer start. And then I'm going to have the timer stop. I'm going to say the time has elapsed like how it's supposed to be done. Uh, I'm going to say the time has elapsed. You may stop working. Um, so I'm going to get those videos out too. So I'm, I'm in a season of being very in intentional about this channel and, and really wanting to help you guys because I am getting so, so, so many questions about um, the procedures and all that kind of stuff. So I want to, I want to make sure that I get these videos out to you guys. Um, if you guys have other ideas, uh, not, not necessarily ideas, but like things that you need, uh, more help with, or you feel like a video would be beneficial to you, please, please let me know below. Or I prefer you reach out to me on Instagram and DM me, and then I can, um, figure something out. I prefer that versus the comment because for the comment section, um, I just want those, um, like questions in there, or I liked this video or something like that, or I didn't like this video, or I wish you did this or da, da, da. But if you have a specific video idea that you want me to do, um, that will help you guys, please just send me those in a DM, uh, on my Instagram. And my Instagram is at the end credits. I have it flashing across the screen, so you can reach out to me. Uh, on there. The above referenced items or actions are not an exhaustive list. Failure to comply with any of these uh, conditions or exhibiting any behavior that suggests an effort to cheat will result in the immediate dismissal from the examination and the candidate's actions reported to the proper authorities. I know that this is unlikely because you guys are perfect people, but in this case, just I'm just letting y'all know, don't be bringing anything up in there that you don't need to be confiscated, okay? Okay. All supplies must be labeled in English. So I have two, um, two examples right here. So my first example, this is not a manufacturer's label. So this is made by, this is from a, a jazzy kit. So the jazzy kits. They come with these labels on them. However, you, you can change this label if you want to peel it off and make a new one out of your own label maker. You can. It needs to be legible and English only. If it is a pre-made label, got it? No ifs, ands, or buts. The reason why is because if the proctor cannot read what that's saying... So you have your English one here, and then you have, let's say, it's written in um, Greek. Let's just say Greek. So we've got Greek writing down here. Greek writing, if I looked at it, I'm like, I have no idea what that says. That could potentially say one of the steps that you always forget in your, um, in, uh, your, in the steps for the procedure. It could say, um, make sure you do this, make sure you do that. We don't know because we don't speak that language. You speak that language. 
So you'll know what it says, but we don't know what it says. So that is why if it's a pre-made label, it can only have English. Now, if you have, oh yeah, here we go. If you have a manufacturer's label, the top portion here is in English and then right underneath it is in Spanish. So that is okay because it's the manufacturer that made that. So that's very unlikely that the manufacturer of this product is thinking, let me give them instructions on how to cheat for a state board and write stuff on there. They're not gonna do that because that's not what their goal is. They just wanna sell you the product. So it's okay to have two languages if it's on a manufacturer's um, label. If it's on your own personally made label, it can only have English. Once again, they've mentioned this twice. So they're now stating it for a second time in your CIB. EPA registered disinfectant wipes that demonstrate bactericidal, fungicidal, virucidal properties must be used. Disinfectant sprays are no longer allowed in the testing environment. Please refer to the suggested examination supplies section to see any further state-specific uh, state requirements for supplies and products. So no ifs, ands, or buts about it. You have to use the wipes as of July 2021. Simulated products are not allowed for disinfectants and hand sanitizers. No aerosol or disinfectant sprays are allowed in the testing environment. So no sprays, no sprays, no sprays. Everyone that keeps asking these questions, this is for July of 2021. It is not for anything prior to that date. If your date is one day before that date, you are okay to use the aerosol. The reason why don't ask me. It's in the CIB. That is my reason for telling you that you cannot have the aerosol cans. You cannot have a spray can of any sort to disinfect. Candidates must wear gloves when using disinfectant. So they did, they did state that. So some people are like, well, can I just use the, um, the disinfectant wipes? Like it's not going to mess up my hands. I mean, I use it like that all the time. I get it. Me too. But they specifically stated in the CIB, every single time that you use your, uh, your wipes, you have to have gloves on. Next portion, candidates are to perform all tasks utilizing products and supplies as they were taught. Okay, so NIC mannequin hand requirements. Candidates are required to use the mannequin hand, parenthesis S, um, it is the candidate's responsibility to come prepared for the examination. Mannequin hands must be an entire hand and cannot have remo removable digits. Mannequin hands must have artificial nail tips pre-attached to the fingers. So I'm going to get a little bit more technical in that in another video. However, yes, you can have more than one doll hand, mannequin hand, whatever you want to call it, but it has to be a whole hand. It has to have the tips already attached. If you buy a uh, a jazzy hand, a, a doll hand, a mannequin hand from the jazzy jazzy um, supply company, those are already pre-attached. You don't have to do it. She already has them on there. The hand is very flexible, all that kind of stuff. So I advise that you purchase a jazzy hand. They do not come with your kit, you have to buy them separately. So I, I advise that you buy the mannequin hand from Jazzy. Special attention, the following information is vital and specific to the NIC National Nail Technology Practical Examination. Candidates will be evaluated on proper designation of materials that are disposed. Candidates are required to bring and use the following supplies for appropriate disposal of materials a container labeled to be disinfected, a container labeled soiled linen, and a container labeled trash. They specify exactly what these containers are labeled as. So you can't put, um, if, the, if it says to be disinfected, you can't change it to um, disinfected stuff 
<laughs> or something like if it says soiled linen, you can't put laundry. You have to put soiled linen. It's specified in here. So you will lose points if you put the wrong labels. So make sure that things are labeled properly. It is specified that there is more than one client represented for the purpose of this examination. A new client is introduced and must be prepared for during the course of the examination. See the, the nail technology practical examination content domain section, which is the next section right here, which tells you all of the um, procedures that you're gonna be doing. The following sections are new to the nail technology practical examination. <clears throat> the, the practical examination has changed. The removal of the sculptured nail was not in the practical examination before. As of July 2021, the removal of the sculptured nail is in the exam. Also, a lot of people are skipping over the fact that the blood exposure procedure has changed. The blood exposure procedure was always in it, but they had you guys doing one specific to the nail technology course. So they've changed it and they put the one that was from the Cosmos, from the, uh, the barbers, from the um, estheticians, they put the one that they use in yours. So it's going to be the exact same as theirs. So the procedures have 100% changed. So be mindful of that. Um, uh, some people are saying, oh, well, you can do the other one because it's, um, because it's still blood exposure, blah, blah, blah. It's not the same. They don't want you to do that one anymore. And they've changed it completely. So make sure you're doing the new one. And I do have a video on that. Um, Candidates are not allowed to label products as single-use items. So if it's a disposable item, you don't need to label it disposable. Monomer must be odorless and factory sealed in its original container with the manufacturer's label. So I do get this question a lot. Um, do not switch out your odorless product. Please don't try and get around it. I know odorless product is extremely annoying to use, it takes forever to dry and it's runny, um, but it's odorless, so it doesn't stink up the place and they're not trying to have the whole place blown out with uh, nail stuff. And every single time that you practice your exam, please practice with odorless product. I can't stress that enough. A lot of my students were like, oh, I'm just gonna use my, my regular product. And then when it came time to take their test, they're like, oh my God, I freaked out because it, you know, didn't dry in time and I uh, couldn't get it to do. Avoid all that. Practice with it. Know how it works. Get to know your products. Become the products. <laughs> like <laughs> you need to actually get in tune with your products so you know how that they work. Okay. Primer must be in its original container with the manufacturer's label. Candidates must wear gloves when using disinfectant. So they said it again, just so you know. They just like kind of threw that one in there. The last portion, we're finally at the end. Nail technology practical examination content domain sections. So this is just telling you what's inside, uh, like what the procedures are called that are gonna be in this exam, okay? The scope of the National Nail Technology Practical Examination includes seven core domain sections. The core domain sections are based on the national job analysis, okay? So which means this is basically what um, all nail jobs are based around is these seven things. Number one, and these are in order uh, in how they're going to go for the test. Number one, work area, preparation, client preparation, and setup of your supplies. This is going to be 15 minutes long. The second procedure Manicure and polish application. This is going to be 20 minutes long. Number three, your work area and new client preparation and setup of your supplies. This will be 10 minutes. Number four, nail tip application and blending. This is 20 minutes. Number five, sculptured nail. This one is going to be 20 minutes. Number six, removal of the sculptured nail. This will also be 20 minutes. Number seven, blood exposure procedure. Individually timed, and this is going to be five minutes, okay? All right, and that, I believe, yes, that is the end 
of the CIB. That is gonna wrap up the video. Please like, share, subscribe. Let me know if there's anything that I could have put in this um, or something that I can put in there next time. My goal is to help all of you guys. I really want everybody to pass because this is, I didn't have that. That, that was my whole goal in becoming an instructor is to become the instructor that I didn't have. Yes, I had good instructors, but they were good instructors. They weren't great instructors. Um, and so I wanted to be the difference. I wanted to make sure that I did what I didn't get. So if, if you need to reach out to me and it's in the middle of the night, I'll get to you when I wake up or when I see it. So if you have a question, please reach out to me. If I don't get back to you on the comments, please, please send me a DM in my Instagram and I'll get back to you as soon as I can and I'll give you as much information as I can. My goal, like I said, is for you to pass and I want to, I want you guys to pass with flying colors. So, all right, that's it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye guys. Always put Christ in the center, center. Do you know he's in control? If it's not about Christ, then I'm not involved. It's either your heart, lukewarm or cold. Lukewarm or cold, it's either your heart, lukewarm or cold. If it's not about Christ, then I'm not involved. I hope you know.